ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence program which is set to revolutionize education across the entire industry. If you aren't concerned with what it is and what it can do, you should be. So I think the best way to demonstrate what ChatGPT is and what it can do is to literally do a demonstration. Okay, so this is the homepage for ChatGPT and the first thing I'm gonna ask it to do is to solve the equation, uh, let's say 7x minus four equals 2x plus, let's say if x is two, then that's gonna be 10, uh, six. Okay, so we hit enter here. And not only is ChatGPT going to be solving this for me, it's gonna give me step-by-step -step, uh, processes for doing so. So to solve the equation, you need to get all the terms with variable X on one side of the equation and all the constants on the other side. So it goes through the steps of solving the equation, giving you all of them and an explanation for each and getting the correct answer of X equals two, which is pretty cool, I think, okay? Uh, the next thing I wanna show you is a, um, let's get it to answer a 10 question multiple choice quiz. So I've got a uh, multiple choice questionnaire, a uh, bunch of questions here, which I'm just gonna copy and paste into chat GPT. I'm going to copy and I'm gonna say to it, uh, provide two sentence answers to the following, following questions and press paste and hit enter. So I've got a bunch of biology questions here that it's gonna answer for me. So the first question is, what is the process of photosynthesis and what is its function in plants? So it says the photosynthesis is the process by which plants convert light energy into chemical energy, which is stored in the form of glucose. It allows plants to use energy of sunlight to produce food and oxygen, which is essential for their growth and survival. And as you can see, it's providing as requested two sentence answers for all of those questions. Okay, and within about, I don't know, one minute, it's done with all 10 questions. And you might be thinking, yeah, okay, the first one about solving an equation, not that impressive. We've already got Wolfram Alpha and Simba Lab and a bunch of other things that do that for you. And fair enough, I'll give you that. This one where it starts answering questions with a specific sentence uh, a quantity in mind, this is starting to get a bit concerning because if we give kids uh, a 10 question multiple choice questionnaire to finish for homework and they can just pump it straight into chat, chat GTP and then copy and paste the answers, this is gonna get a bit of an issue. If you're not convinced yet, let me show you something. Maybe you're not in one of the maths or sciences. Uh, let me show you something that should alarm any humanities type of teacher, okay? So I'm gonna say to chat GTP now, I'm gonna say, write a 200 word summary of the United States of America's involvement in World War II and hit enter. Now, as you can see, ChatGTP is not simply a question and answer program. It's artificial intelligence based on language and text, and it can take inputs that you give it, such as these prompts, and output what is pretty good, I think, uh, prose in terms of, in this case, an essay. It's not limited to essays, of course, but this should be concerning for most teachers who teach these humanities subjects, right? If your students can write a 200 word uh, response or summary in, let's say, 30 seconds, even though I'm not wearing a watch, that took about 30 seconds, uh, and not actually do the research and um, summarizing and synthesis themselves, this is an issue. So at this point, you might be a little bit alarmed and concerned thinking about all the ways students can use this type of software, this AI program against you. But despite the doom and gloom thumbnail, I do think there are plenty of opportunities for us as educators. So the first thing I wanna encourage everyone is to not panic. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna go through some solutions to some of the problems we're gonna face and also some opportunities for us as teachers to actually use this thing, so do not panic. The second thing that I recommend is that we have a chat with our students and open and honest discourse about ChatGTP, its uses and its issues in education. Now, I know you might be thinking, Mark, if we tell the students about ChatGTP and show it what it can do, 
aren't they gonna be more likely to just do it and use it? And to that I say, when was the last time that adults in a society learned a technology before the youth? I can't think of one. I promise you, the moment that any student found out what ChatGPT can do for them in education, every single other student in the world knew within 24 hours. It's just the nature of the world we live in now, and it's the nature of students communicating with each other. Anything that's gonna benefit them, everyone's gonna know about it. So we aren't the first on board this ship, we're probably the last. Now in terms of discussing it with the students, I recommend we talk to them about why we do what we do in education and why we run the assessment tasks that we do run, right? When we set an essay for a student, we're not actually setting it to test their knowledge of the Great Depression or United States involvement in World War II. We don't really care about that. What we care about is the student's ability to do research, to analyze information, to synthesize all the information, and then finally to communicate their knowledge in a report or an essay. It's all about those skills that we're building throughout their schooling lives. And if the students understand this, then they are gonna be far less likely to actually use this thing to cheat. Because what they're gonna realize, if they truly understand what I was just talking about, they're gonna realize that by using it to write their essays for them, they're really just cheating themselves. Like the whole point of education in general is to create ethical, moral, global citizens of this world who can contribute and provide value. And without these skills that we're teaching through essay writing, through problem solving in mathematics, the students aren't gonna have those skills. And when students know that, I think they're gonna be far less likely to actually cheat and use these tools against us. And finally, a reason why we should talk to students about ChatGTP is because it's actually an incredible learning tool. I'm gonna to show in the next section how it can be used to our benefit and also to the benefit of students. So them actually knowing about it's gonna enhance their education rather than detract from it. You might be thinking, Mark, yeah, sure, some students are gonna get that, but there are plenty who aren't gonna care and all they're gonna do is cheat with ChatGPT. And my answer to that is, yep, yes they are. And honestly, there's not very much we can do about it. What we can do about it though, is look at actually how we run assessment and the purpose of assessment and consider alternative ways to introduce assessment to students where they can't use this to cheat, but can use it as a support tool. Now the first solution and the simplest and probably the laziest is to just have students complete assessment tasks. So essays, reports and exams in supervised conditions. Give them a certain time limit and supervise them, make sure they can't use chat GPT or any other AI but I think that's quite lazy and short-sighted and rather we should use this opportunity to develop different ways to assess students. One of these ways that I've been thinking about is actually an assessment task that I did in high school from one of my French lessons. It's called a Viva Voce and it's essentially an assessment task where the student and the teacher sit down together and they just have a conversation about the topic at hand. So a five to 10 minute conversation about say, the United States of America's involvement in World War II, just like our essay was about but rather than producing a report or an essay, the student, uh, they have a conversation with the teacher. And I think this is um, going to demonstrate the student's abilities just as well as any old essay would. Furthermore, the advantage of an assessment task like a Viva Voce, it gives the teacher the opportunity to differentiate the assessment task depending on how well the student is going, right? If the student is doing really well in the assessment and the discussion, they clearly know a lot about it. The teacher can ask much deeper questions to extract that, uh, I guess, deeper and higher order thinking knowledge from the student. And that's gonna give the student the opportunity to develop their high level of skill. As opposed to a student who may be struggling with the first few questions the teacher asks, the teacher can then differentiate by asking much more basic and fundamental questions so that the student can still demonstrate some knowledge of the assessment task. Now, of course, there's gonna be issues with any sort of assessment task, right? There's plenty of students who I know personally would feel very anxious and overwhelmed in a one-on-one -on -one with a teacher in this sort of scenario. So of course, this is not the answer to all the questions. It's just one option that teachers have to rethink about how we undertake assessment tasks and realize that Despite the doom and gloom thumbnail again, ChatGTP is not destroying education, it's just revolutionizing it. 
So I've talked about how I think AI is going to revolutionize education and also the teaching practice as a whole, but I've kind of approached it so far with all of its issues and its doom and gloominess. So in this next section, I'm going to actually look at the upside and the positives of AI and chat GPT when it comes to education and how students and teachers can use it to their advantage and enhance the outcomes of the students. So to do that, I'm going to just give a demonstration like I gave a demonstration before. So I'm going to head it back over to chat GPT now. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is talking to ChatGPT like a chatbot, which is, I guess it's actually intended purpose. It's called ChatGPT after all. Uh, and I'm gonna approach it from the perspective of a student who say is struggling with photosynthesis, just like our biology quiz, and didn't really get it in class. So this is a really cool tool and I'll talk about it in a second. But first you're gonna see that I'm gonna start typing here and just say, what is photosynthesis? And I'm gonna spell it wrong on purpose to indicate that chat GPT can actually infer what you mean, even if you spell stuff wrong, which is really handy for kids as well. And it's gonna give me some basic information about photosynthesis. Actually, it's not really that basic. It's um, talking about chlorophyll and glucose and chemical energy and chloroplasts and whatnot. And if this student is say in year, let's say year seven, and they're kind of only just learning photosynthesis, photosynthesis for the first time, this might be a bit much. So one cool thing about chatbot is you can talk to it like a human being as if that human being was the guru of everything. So rather than having to re-Google stuff and look for a simpler website, I can just say, make it simpler to understand and hit enter. And ChatGPT now is gonna break it down even simpler. So it's instead of saying the process by which plants, algae and some bacteria convert light energy into chemical energy in the form of glucose and or other sugars, it says photosynthesis is the process that allows plants to convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy in the form of glucose, which is a type of sugar. I'm gonna say, make it like you're talking to a 10 year old, right? So maybe the kid is 10 years old. And so it says, sure, photosynthesis is the way that plants make their own food. Now we're talking. They use energy from the sun, carbon dioxide from the air and water from the ground to create a special kind of sugar called glucose. So you can see that it's adapting based on the prompts that I give it. So now I might just say, uh, do all plants use it? Question mark. And it says, yes, all plants use photosynthesis. So you can see here, ChatGPT is gonna be amazing for students who for one reason or another, don't get the education that they really want or don't get the education that they really need from the classroom. Whether they don't like their teacher, whether they don't like the peers that they're with so they really don't engage well with the class. Maybe they just hate school. Maybe they're just really uncomfortable and anxious in a school setting. Whatever the reason, ChatGPT can open up avenues for the student to learn in a really easy and straightforward fashion. All right, another amazing thing you can do with ChatGPT is get feedback on written work. So earlier in the video, we asked it to write an essay about World War II. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste that essay and pretend that it was actually written by a student who is asking for feedback on their work. So uh, I'm gonna go back to United States of America's involvement, copy and paste. Now you can see I've already had a go at this, but I know exactly what to write now. So in our new chat, I'm gonna write, give feedback and advice on the following essay about World War II and USA involvement. And then I'm going to paste the essay underneath the chat GPT gave us, but again, remember it's a student doing this and hit enter. And it's going to start giving me feedback on it. So first of all, the essay provides a good overview of the United States involvement in World War II. It clearly explains the events leading up to the war, the role of the US, blah, 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 blah. Then it says one suggestion for improvement would be to provide more context and background information on the broader context of the war, rather than just focusing on the United States. Uh, additionally, it might be helpful to provide more specific examples of the contributions the US made to the Allied war effort. So a student who, again, for whatever reason, isn't going to vibe well with their teacher or other peers and they don't really have a means to get support for their education, ChatGPT can be that, I guess, person or that thing that they use to get feedback on their written work. So assuming that the student is committed to their education, they're not going to abuse ChatGPT, we've already talked about that, but if they're not going to abuse it, they can actually use it as a really powerful feedback tool. Furthermore, teachers can use ChatGPT in this exact same way. So if you're a teacher and you're 
in the humanities or legal or English or whatever it is, and you have a lot of drafting and feedback that you have to complete and it takes up most of your time and it's very draining, which is what I've heard teachers have to go through if they're in those areas. I'm math, so fortunately I don't have to. But if you're one of those teachers, this could be a tool to save you immense amounts of time. You can take the, the essays and the reports that students have given you, plug them into ChatGPT and get feedback on those things. You could even structure it and give it certain prompts about the types of things you want it to give you feedback on. You can then relay these responses that ChatGPT is giving you and give them back to the students and you then in class can clarify if the students have any more questions about that feedback. This opens up so much time saving and it's gonna give you way more time to plan fun and engaging lessons and to just be way more creative and productive in areas that you actually want to be. So teachers, if you are in those areas, consider giving ChatGPT a look at doing feedback for you. The next thing I wanna talk about for teachers using ChatGPT is to create formative data captures. So earlier in the video, we got answers for a biology quiz from ChatGPT, but I also generated that quiz from ChatGPT. So if you're the kind of person who uses Socrative or you use quizzes or any other online um, method of uh, generating quizzes for your students where it captures data for you, this can be a really great time saver in terms of actually generating those quizzes and the answers. So let's jump on here and ask it to say, write a 10 question quiz with solutions about, let's go legal studies, um, the Australian constitution and hit enter. So it's going to generate me 10 quiz, uh, a 10 question quiz about the Australian constitution and more importantly, uh, the answers. So really now I can just go into one of my favorite quiz editors like quizzes. And if you've never used quizzes, it's my favorite by the way. And if you've watched my other videos, you know I rave about it. Uh, if you haven't used quizzes, click up here. It's going to be a video link to a full overview of quizzes and a full tutorial about how to use it. Um, otherwise use whatever favorite editor you've got and just copy and paste the questions and answers in. It'll save you a lot of time. Of course, disclaimer, make sure you read the questions and the answers. This thing is not fallible. It can make mistakes. So make sure you read it and make sure all the answers are correct. But if they are, it's much faster than coming up with your own questions and your own work solution answers. Furthermore, a lot of these um, answers are quite short. You can ask it to um, make the answers more in depth. So uh, longer responses, or if the answers are too long, say for example, uh, they are actually all pretty short, but if they, if ChatGPT gave you two longer answers, you can ask it for more short and simple answers. And the last thing I'm gonna share with you today in this video about how you as a teacher can use ChatGPT to make your teaching way more effective and free up more time is to get it to do your lesson plans for you. Now, this is especially gonna be useful if you're a new or beginning teacher. And that's because you may not necessarily have the skills or the experience to write a lesson from scratch. I know when I was first starting out in education, the first time I taught anything, even if I knew the content, I wasn't necessarily the greatest at planning those lessons and coming out with ideas. So ChatGPT can do that for you. So let's have a look. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT here to uh, construct, or let's just say write, write a 70 minute lesson plan around, uh, let's say, the water cycle for year eight students and hit enter. So it's gonna give me a lesson title. It's gonna go through um, objectives, which is like your learning intention and end or success criteria. It's gonna give you materials that you need for its suggested one. It's gonna give you an outline. It's gonna give you a few activities. And this is just a great starting point, right? As a beginning and new teacher, well, all teachers, but especially new and beginning ones, uh, we spend a lot of our time creating the basic idea and the basic scaffold for things uh, before we actually go in and make it nice and make it fancy and make it proper. So let's not waste all our time doing that, but rather have ChatGPT do it for us, right? All of those basic time-saving things that we wish we didn't have to do, but we do those administrative tasks, such as writing the lesson plan, ChatGPT can do it for us. Now, there are so many different ways that you can use ChatGPT as a teacher or a student. Uh, if you know of any more, if you're familiar with ChatGPT or if you've had a play around, make sure you write it down in the comments how you're gonna be using ChatGPT for your teaching in the coming year in 2023. I'd love to hear about uh, whether you're gonna use ChatGPT. And if you're not 
please let me know why not. I would love to hear uh, all the pros and cons of what you think ChatGPT is as a um, teaching tool or as a learning tool if you're a student. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure again that you like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more content like this. Uh, my name is Mark O'Donoghue. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.